and I believe we are live. My name is Amanda and I am with Game Brewer and I'm here today to talk about Paris. Uh, this is a game by uh, Wolfgang Kramer and Michael Kiesling. It came out in 2020 uh, and we are now looking forward to a new expansion. So we'll be doing a uh, Kickstarter on May 24th that will have the deluxe edition of this game back, which is not something that is still available, only the retail version, and the expansion that will also be deluxe to match that deluxe version and for any of you that picked up the deluxe version during our first Kickstarter. And for those of you that don't know, the deluxe edition has wooden tiles. That's wooden bonus tiles, wooden building tiles, wooden strategy tiles, all things wooden. It has a really great feel uh, on the table, great table presence. Um, and that's what's coming back out. And so we wanted to talk again about Paris. Some people may have missed Paris the first time around. It has been on Tabletopia. There is now this version uh, of Le Trois, that's the expansion to uh, the base game, and it is also already on Tabletopia. I have set up a three-player game here for us today with the expansion tiles. However, I'm just first going to explain the basic rules of Paris for those of you that might not know it. I will try to keep an eye on the chat, so if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask there. We will be posting this later on YouTube, so if you're watching us from there, uh, thanks for tuning in. All right, let's get started. So like I said, this is a three-person game of Paris, and this is the overview of the city. The center of the board is the Arc de Triomphe, and if you've seen the real version of the game, there is a 3D model of the Arc de Triomphe. You do not need to play with it. You can also just use the tile that goes in the center that is uh, flipped to show the Arc in illustrations. And the streets radiating out from that uh, roundabout in Paris are the different districts that we are playing in, that we are going to be adding building to, putting our investments in, trying to claim and occupy those buildings in order to have a strong presence within each district. Having those strong presence in those districts to fight over area control for majority will get you points for the end of the game. There is a bonus track which goes around the outside, excuse me, and uh, you'll be able to get points from there as well. Now again, I did say I set up with the um, expansion Latois in here. I'm not going to be explaining those, but for eagle-eyed viewers, you'll notice the bonus tiles have already been mixed in with those from the expansion. And off to the side, we have the turquoise or teal colored strategy tiles, which were not found in the base game. But for all other purposes, the explanation can be done on the same, and I will touch on the expansion elements at the end of this video. Again, I'll try to keep an eye on the chat. So as I go, if you have any questions, please do feel free to ask. All right, so I mentioned that you're gonna be putting buildings and keys and investing in the different districts. The way that this board uh, gets populated is it starts out empty. And at the start of your turn, you're going to be adding a district uh, a building tile, those are the landmarks, <laughs> a uh, building tile to one of the districts. You do not know what number building, but you do get a preview of what district one of those buildings will go in so that I can see this is red, purple, or yellow. And I can look out on the board in here at the beginning, it's all empty. But I know that each of the different districts have different values. So you can see here the, the red one, Montmartre, has a value of seven and the purple is a value two. So it's uh, better money when you invest in Montmartre, but that probably means a lot of other people will be going there. So it's probably gonna be highly contested. Again, at the beginning of the game, you may be thinking mostly about how to get more money. So I would probably want to go ahead and select the red uh, tile for Montmartre. So I would go ahead and I would drop it over in this district. Now, if you put it over top here on Tabletopia of any of the um, areas, it should flip over for us. And then we're going to zoom back over here to see, oh, we didn't quite get it in the right place. That's fine. It'll just be able to pop back up. And then you place it into the appropriate number. Now, getting the eight early on is... Uh, not great because um, it's, it's fine, but early on you don't have a lot of money. That number you see on there is not only its strength, it's also the cost of the building. So I'm going to have to earn eight francs before I'm going to be able to place a key into that uh, building. So I'm not as excited. I was hoping for a one or a two because it would only cost me one or two francs to occupy. But that's not my turn. That's just seeding the board with buildings. At the start of your turn, you get a choice of one of the three districts to add a tile to. Now on my turn, I'm going to be taking one of the keys from behind my screen. 
On Tabletopia, you can only see the keys that are behind your screen here. Um, so you'll notice here the red player, they have keys, but I can't see it because I am not the red player. So I'm just gonna look at what's behind my screen. I have three francs. I have, I believe for a three player game, uh, nine keys. And then I also can see what the value of prestige tokens and resources will be for the market. Um, which is sort of uh, extra actions that you may need later in the game, but not anything that's uh, that you would know about right now. My turn consists of placing one of these keys out on the board. I can't just buy that building, not only because I don't have eight francs and there is only the one, but also because I um, have to have a key in that district first. It has to go into the bank. So let's see if I can do this. You can't, one thing on Tabletopia is you can't hold something and then move to that area. So I'm going to invest in this district. I don't have to invest in the, in the district that I placed my building in, but I chose to that building's district because the value is so high with the, um, uh, district here, I'm going to get seven francs that I'm going to be able to put behind uh, my screen. So I'm going to go ahead and claim those now. I wonder if this is, oh yeah, I gave myself some money. I'm pretty clever that way. You'll notice there's fives and there's ones and tens. So I'm just going to go ahead and take uh, seven francs behind my screen. Again, other players are not going to have this information. It is going to be hidden. And that is the end of my turn. Placing the building, which doesn't belong to me and doesn't have really anything to do with my turn other than to get something out on the board, and then placing a key. To start out, you have to place them into the different uh, uh, banks in order to have money. Now, um, <laughs> one flaw for setting this up as a three-player game is I can't pull keys from behind the board, but there are uh, some of these keys that are extras. So I'm going to pretend this is a key from the red player uh, for just demonstration purposes. But red would start out by selecting one of these uh, building tiles. So they're going to oh, I always switch the landmarks. There we go. You can set camera views in Tabletopia if you didn't know that, and then use your number keys to kind of reference them really quickly, which is super handy. So there's two yellows and a purple. Purple was that really not very valuable building area. So I'm gonna go ahead and red's gonna choose uh, the yellow, which I think is six, yes. And oh, upside down, because it's on the wrong side. Flip it over here, and I've placed it into the right area. I'm more excited by three. Three is kind of exciting for me as the red player. So then, again, that is not the red player's turn. It doesn't belong to them. It could go to anybody, but they are also, like me, sort of interested in that district. So they're going to go ahead and place their key there. They could place it in uh, the, any district they wanted. They could kind of join me here and maybe know that that's going to be a heavily contested area and start to battle over it. Or maybe they are just going to kind of go for this because it's a lower value building. They're going to take six francs. I won't actually do that. Place it behind their screen and then it goes on to the next player. So as you can see, the turns are very quick. As uh, the board gets filled up with more and more of these buildings, there's going to be more and more uh, directions that people are going to be taking based on the things that they have and the things that they need, either in the resources that are uh, next to these uh, buildings, such as the, the, the gold, the stone and the wood or the prestige tokens, which all relate to those landmark buildings that I keep <laughs> going to um, because they're going to cost resources in the top right as well as be able to exchange prestige tokens for victory points as you can see on the left as well as have a really strong value for the district's area control. Now I haven't talked about that area control that you have in uh, the different districts so maybe I should return to that. I'm going to take a quick peek at the chat. It doesn't look like anyone has any questions. It's fine. All right, moving on. Um, what you're ultimately trying to do is have a good, strong presence. So maybe on my next turn, let's skip over White's turn. And I'm going to, once again, hit the wrong button. <laughs> I'm going to select, perhaps, uh, I want to get in on that yellow action here. So I'm going to go and place a building in uh, yellow. I'm going to zoom in here. Didn't flip over for us. Ah, oh, it's a nice one. But I kind of handed that to red, so that was maybe a mistake. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm blue. I'm going to go behind my screen. I'm going to go ahead and, and take a key and on my turn add it to the board. Oh, man. Where'd it go? Ah! I just, you know, dumping it over here. Uh, <laughs> uh, slide over and again I wish I could carry my key with me but here we go come on 
But I can't place on that building. I'm super excited by that one, but I've essentially handed that to Red. Red is going to uh, also do the same thing where they first select their building. They're going to place it out. And then on their turn, instead of adding a new key, they can instead start to buy and invest in buildings. They can move their key from the bank to that building. That will cost them the value of that building, which is one in this instance, and they will uh, pay that one franc to the bank. And now the red player has a strength of one in that district. Now you'll see that there is no scoring VP token here in the center. So you're like, well, how do they end up with points or how do they know if it's going to get points? That's a very tactical part of the game and part of the strategy because a, a VP tile will not be added to a district until a player places a fourth key on a building, not a bank, in a district. Then they get to choose one of the uh, victory point tiles to add. And the other really fun tactical thing is it doesn't have to go into the district that you just put the fourth key in. So maybe you place the fourth key in a district, but you don't even have a strong presence there. You don't even care about that district. You could choose to place uh, that uh, VP token into another district that you might be the only person in that district and you're like oh i'm gonna place this value 21 um, you can see the top is for the person who's in the lead the second place player gets the middle and the third place strength uh gets the third bottom one and for each of the districts your value is determined by the keys you have on buildings once i've placed one key in a building later turns i could upgrade that same key so instead of putting it out in a bank instead of moving it from a bank to a building i could take a key off of a building i already control you're going to lose those points but you're going to pay the difference so if i move from this one to a three i'm going to only have to pay two francs because i've already invested one and I upgrade my strength of one to a value of three. But maybe I stayed on that one and I just placed out a new key and then I moved that key to the three and then I add those two buildings together. So my strength in this area is a value of one plus a three. So then looking back over here at the end of the game, all players are gonna add up their strengths between the one, the two, the three, the four, the eight, and landmarks that might be placed in that top area and then divide those victory points. But you don't know if that district's going to get one of those victory point scoring tiles. You have to try to be the fourth person to place a key in a district in order to have the privilege of placing that token. The landmarks are very powerful and strong. They have um, values 10 through 16. You can place multiple landmarks in a one district. They're going to go into this little area above an, uh, a district. So if I wanted to build this 10, I would be placing it here as if it was a building belonging to that district. I would need to have had one gold token behind my screen to pay. And at, at that time, I can place it down spend the resource, put my key on it, pay the difference. Maybe I'm coming from the eight value building. I'd only have to pay two, just like upgrading a regular building. And now I have a strength of 10 in that district. Or maybe I came from the two and I paid a value of eight, but I already also had the eight. So now my strength in this district is a value of 18. It adds just like the other buildings to your strength for those victory point battles that you're going for that area control majority. I also mentioned that there's points to be had when you built this thing up immediately upon building it, which are on the prestige tokens on the side. This one says I'll get three points if I exchange one of those copper colored prestige tokens, and then another copper colored prestige token will get me another three points. And if I have a silver one, it will get me four. I don't have to have any of those. It's great if I have all three, but I could just have one or two and I would still score three or four or seven points um, from which ones I exchange at the time that I build my building. So you strategically wanna have the resources, you wanna have those prestige tokens, and then you wanna build those landmarks in areas that you wanna have higher strength for the majority control. Once a low number landmark building is built, myself or another player could then build a stronger one, which is going to get placed above that same one and it can go higher. But if I have already played the 13 in this area, uh, the red player cannot come along and build the 10, 11. They'd have to build, or the nine or 12, they'd have to build the, the 14, 15 or 16. So if you build the Eiffel Tower, nobody can uh, build a stronger landmark in that area. All right, taking a second for a sip of water and see if there's any questions. 
we're almost done explaining just the basic rules of Paris for the base game. I haven't uh, touched on any of the expansion stuff yet. This is all just from a regular Paris, which will be available in the deluxe form May 24th with those wooden tiles. But one major component I haven't talked about is the bonus track. Now the bonus track is the um, green tiles that are around the circular outside of the board. And it's sort of like a separate mini game that you are playing while you're fighting for those area control majorities in the individual districts. The lower valued buildings in each of the different areas, so we see, oh, maybe I should go to six here, yes. So this value uh, one building, it only has a strength of one for that area control majority and it's giving you kind of a copper prestige sugar, which may or may not be helpful if you buy a, a landmark that wants you to exchange copper. But in the top left, and unfortunately it's a little crooked here on Tabletopia, there's that bonus tile symbol. That means I can move my bonus uh, track uh, marker along, oh, I kind of cut it off there, sorry, here, uh, along the top of the track. So I'm blue. If I go on that one, uh, that was red, so let's not confuse you. Red player has gone on the number one building. They're allowed to move on the bonus track. They're going to take their uh, bonus track worker and they can move around this circle. They can move anywhere in a clockwise fashion from that starting position and take the tile that they choose to stop on. The, the catch is you can never move backwards. You can't go counterclockwise. So you're going to go around the circle one time. There are a couple bonus tiles that break those rules that kind of change that up. But for the most part, once you've moved past, uh, so these um, uh, first four tiles, I said, I don't want those. I want this wood because I'm looking at a landmark tile. I want a build that needs wood and this is going to be a freebie wood. I am not allowed to go back and take gold or this special action, which allows you to put a key where somebody else or where you have already placed a key, doubling the value of that building for you for that area control majority. Um, Eagle-eyed observers will notice that there are some that have this little Arc de Triomphe symbol at the top. Those are bonus tile expansions. In the regular setup of the game, numbers 1 through 30 would be placed in orders around the track without variation, unless you add the variant even from the base game. But uh, going 1 through 30 in this uh, expansion, some of these bonus tiles have been mixed in, and uh, the three areas, A, B, and C, based on the backs of these tiles, have been randomized. That's a little uh, expansion note. But other than that, it plays the same as the base game. Just note base game setup. They'd be 1 through 30 in order. So I would choose to go on this tile here. I would, and in Tabletopia it's a little less than elegant, but you can take it and you can actually put it in your hand to then later take it to the... Oh, that didn't work, did it? I was going to be super savvy on my Tabletopia skills there. <laughs> oh, got my hand. Oh, come on. There we go. I put it in my hand, which is cool because then when I go to my screen, come on. When I go to my screen, this is super cool. You're watching how savvy I am in this technology that I can put it, I can put it behind my screen. Or I can just keep it in my hand, of course, because it takes up a little bit of room here. Uh, and then I have it to look at when I need to use it. Uh, and I can keep that kind of tucked down. All right, uh, so that is the bonus tile I took. I accessed that track by investing my key into a building one, two, or three. The last thing to note is, um, I don't, did we get a three in that section? Yes, we did. Uh, on the three uh, tile, you'll note you can take a bonus tile up there in the, <laughs> what is top right for your screen, but normally top left, you can pay two francs to access that bonus track. So it's not free when you build in a three because the three is a little bit stronger. It does get you a gold prestige, but you still are able to move along that track. So buildings one, two, and three early on in the game, moving around that track, tactfully, uh, tactic trying to decide how fast you need to move and jump ahead to maybe grab some big scoring tiles. So uh, uh, it's a good example of end game scoring. It's sort of, uh, tricky to get. And there can be multiples of them depending on the number of players. We're doing a three to four player game. So there are some tiles out. This one is the last tile in the, in the base game. And this one is saying that for every different type of building you have a key in, so uh, the hotels, the bakeries, the bookshops, the theaters, you will get a certain number of points here in our three player game, uh, 15 points if you have uh, one of each of those. 
one of each of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while since I played. So this is a hotel. This is a bookshop. And you might want to jump ahead and grab that early on. Uh, there's other ones like that one you saw where you can place a key in uh, the place that you have a key. This one allows you to place a key where someone else, a, a building that somebody else has already occupied. So maybe they're on the eight and you're on the five. You could have this tile, you discard it, you pay the difference of three and you add your key to the same building. And now both of you share a value of eight. So hopefully you have a value 10 landmark or a value uh, four building. Um, there are ones that allow you to uh, kind of patiently wait. Maybe you've been upgrading from threes to fours to try to get a little more value. You're um, able to then exchange this tile if you have it for five points for every uh, building four that you have in your uh, um, uh, under a key of yours. All right, so those are the bonus tiles with the numbers that are from the base game. This one kind of gives you some prestige tokens to use when you build those landmarks. And um, there are, um, you know, repeats, so three points for being on value two buildings. Those extra keys that I was using in part of the example, you can actually get more keys behind your building, which is great because near the end of the game, you're going to be like, I'm running out of money. Um, and this is another way to have another key that you can put out in a district to get more money. Now, I barely touched on the Arc de Triomphe. As you can see, it is in the center of the board. It is a value zero bank. Uh, you'd say, well, why do you want to go and get no money? Well, that, uh, unlike the other uh, banks where you have to move your key directly from that bank to a building in that district, you can move from the Arc de Triomphe to any one of the six districts. You are not confined by a single district. So it allows you to have some good tactical positioning um, later on in the game or mid game to kind of jump in, maybe place the key of the fourth key in a district, or so you can choose and, and where one of those valuable uh, victory point tiles go, or maybe it allows you to take a bonus action when you need it, or like you're like suddenly, oh, I do need a, a gold resource, so you can jump onto an eight building. That's expensive because you're jumping from nothing to eight, but um, it can be done. So the Arc de Triumph is kind of a tactical positioning place that you can take and. Um, other than that, I think that that is all the base game elements. We've covered the different districts, how you're fighting for area control uh, majority, but they may or may not get those bonus point scoring tiles. The bonus track, which has different ways to score points mid game uh, uh, in, in various ways, but it's sort of like its own game in and of itself that you access from the one, two or three buildings. And um, uh, that's about it. Now the end game of the base game is triggered after all the building tiles have been seeded out into the different areas. And there are three that are randomly removed from every game. So that will be all but three of these buildings filling up each of these areas. Then players can start to take the um, end game tiles, which are these uh, French flag tiles. Now they are um, the one element that I find a little bit tricky here in Tabletopia. Normally in the, in the real game, you just pick up this little pile of tiles, you look at all of them and you choose one. Um, for savvy tabletop players, that's pretty easy. I usually suggest, especially for people who, if you're not super familiar with Tabletopia, just to flip them all over, leave them face up. It is open information, which is a little bit different than the designers intended, but it's easier here on Tabletopia. You can choose one of them. They'll be uh, prestige that you can then exchange when you're building the landmarks, victory points that you can just take, uh, uh, resources like wood and money. So you choose one of them in lieu of your whole turn. You don't put out a key, nothing else happens. You just decide that you want to take one of these end game tiles and to find one that you like and take the goods from the back. And then you put the rest of them back. When all of those French flags are gone, that triggers the end of the game. Well, that is how to play Paris. So I'm just going to briefly touch on the elements that are going to be in the Le Trois expansion, which is a part of the deluxe Kickstarter on May 24th. So the wooden tiles, uh, I you have seen some of these bonus tiles as I went around. Some of the more interesting ones, this one is a new victory point tile. It's a special victory point token. And you would actually, it didn't have it set up here because uh, I don't think we can do it on Tabletopia because these are randomized. So Tabletopia does randomize it for you. Um, but if it's in play, you want to put this uh, tile on this bonus tile. When somebody claims this, 
you would also take that special bonus tile and how it works is it, it only scores for the person who has the majority. The second and third place finishers are going to get no points. And you can't just place it out when a fourth key comes out. It's when you choose to spend that tile, you pick a district that has already got a scoring token on it and you cover it up and you make enemies of your friends forever, but it's great in the game setting because you get to um, kind of control that district. Hopefully you're the one that's going to be benefiting and getting those 12 points, uh, but second and third place aren't going to get any points as uh, from that one token. So any of these, uh, so this allows you to exchange this and just take two of those endgame uh, scoring tiles. Let's see what else we got here. Maybe going backwards. Um, Oh, this one is fun. It allows you to uh, uh, to take the three tiles that were removed from the game and look at those and uh, uh, place one of those down and then take the bonus that was next to it. So you, normally you don't take that bonus unless you place your key on it. And normally one of these three tiles isn't going to come out, but it's sort of like a extra... Uh, we're going to add one more tile to the game and you get to pick which one it is from the three that were removed. So you're like, I know that there's one missing from this district and I really want that tile. If you have this bonus, you can chuck it, find that tile, add it to the board. You don't own it with your key, but you can take the bonus that would have gone uh, next to it. Um, let's see, what other new bonus tiles are in here? Uh, this one allows you to take a uh, a key directly from the Arc de Triomphe and add it onto a five uh, for a cost of zero. So it's sort of a powerful way to get suddenly a very big presence in any one district. And when you set up the bonus tiles uh, with the expansion tiles, you're going to mix them. You're going to sort them by A, B, and C. You're going to place them randomly in A, B, and C. And so you'll have a mix of new and old in variable uh, position order. So it just kind of changes up the game a little bit. The biggest change from this expansion is the strategy tiles. And it also makes the Arc de come into even more tactical play. Not only is it a place for you to uh, position yourself to jump into any area, but all players are going to start the game with one starting, I think I've moved my, oh, whoa, <laughs> sorry, moved it off to the side here, but we're all going to start with one starting strategy tile. A strategy tile gives you a variable player power, something different that the other players do not have. So my starting player tile here says in my three player game, whenever anyone, that's the little the indicator from the black and white key there, myself or an opponent's key gets placed on the Arc de Triomphe. I'm going to get three francs, which is pretty exciting because money can be hard to come by. So I really like my starting tile. Um, let's take a look at what um, maybe maybe the red player has a bad starting tile. Red has, well, there's no bad starting tiles, but <laughs> red has, um, oh, the one where they can place multiple keys of their same type on uh, spaces in the banks. Uh, either the Arc de Triomphe or the bank, they can put uh, down a secondary key and have that kind of stacked and ready to go, positioning themselves to jump on multiple different buildings. Maybe they don't like that tile so much, so how they can exchange it for a different variable power is when they go on the Arc de Triomphe and they place their key there in the center. So on their turn, they've added their building, they're going to place their key out, they go here, and they say, you know what, I don't really like this um, one, so I'm going to... Uh, oops. <laughs> Less than elegant. Looking away, as you admire my skills here, I have going to swap out this tile. So even the starting tiles can be swapped out with the regular tiles. And I say, okay, I don't want that one. I then can choose from all of these uh, available strategy tiles on which one I want to then have for my current uh, power. I don't uh, think I want to touch on all of them, but some of them like this one allows you to look at the top three, uh, those bonus, uh, not bonus, the building tile stacks. So you can actually see what numbers are coming out before you place. So it gives you a little bit of uh, information that other players do not have. Um, this one allows you to just always place your keys where someone else has a key, so that's incredibly powerful. This one, anytime you go on a four, you're also allowed to move on that bonus track, so it gives you more access to this bonus track around the outside. Uh, it has no cost, you just do it like it's a one or a two building. When you place on a four and you're in possession of this strategy tile, you can move your bonus track and claim more bonus tiles. Um, 
This one says whenever you move, like so you're moving from a one to a five, whenever you move your key from a building to a, uh, or off a, a building or a landmark, you're gonna get a point. So it's ways to score kind of points throughout uh, the game. And this one is interesting because whenever you add a key to a district from a bank, you're gonna get one point for every key, yours or opponents of lower value in that area. Or if I move from like that one to an eight, and there's a key on the three, I would score a point for that key that I moved past in that district, even if it was my own key. So it's it's ways for you to kind of plot and plan to find different strategies, different from your opponents, because you're the only person with that variable player power. So the bonus tiles and the uh, strategy tiles are uh, the expansion Le Trois for the game Paris, and it will be available in deluxe form to match those wooden tiles from the base game, base deluxe game. Uh, as well, if you haven't already picked it up, you can pick up the base game plus the expansion on May 24th as a complete bundle. The tiles themselves are meant to just be stored in the original box. The insert from the deluxe edition, even if you got it last year, already contained an area for those tiles to go. So it's not another big box to take up room on your shelf. It's sort of just a mini tile expansion that you can add to your base game of Paris, but it radically changes how strategic this game is. Those strategy tiles, giving everybody those different player powers really switches things up on how uh, the game plays each time you play. Plus you can randomize the, the bonus tiles in the base game, but having them automatically randomized adds another whole element uh, with those, uh, you don't play with them all. So some some games, won't, you won't have all the bonus tiles because there's just uh, a lot more of them. So that is Paris. I don't see any questions, so hopefully a lot of you are going to watch this on YouTube later and check out our Kickstarter on May 24th. It's going to be uh, a way to get the deluxe version. So it, it's truly, if you missed out before, you can get the base game plus the expansion, or if you already got the uh, uh, deluxe base game last year, you'll be able to just get the expansion to add right into your box, uh, hopefully even later this year. Oh, you know, we don't make any promises this era that we live in, but we, we do try and we want to, uh, excited to hopefully be back seeing people in person and at conventions very soon. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week.